three days in a row coming here even though it is quite a drive for me but this is also quite a location. Set a timer for one minute. One minute, counting down. What a place, so cool. Let me show you the image I'm working on now. I'm taking a long exposure back here and the uh, time is up. Might be hard to see because the lighting here is not ideal, but uh, I'm taking more long exposures uh, from this, uh, from the inside of this old abandoned house. I'm using the windows as frames first for a stick uh, on the water, and now for that uh, bridge uh, there. This place is kind of challenging because uh, there is no ground anymore. It's just a bunch of mud, so I had to put um, some wood and some rocks. Uh, under the uh, tripod so uh, you know it doesn't sink. I am sinking myself. I was actually pretty excited about the mud situation here because it was a good chance to use my boots to put them to use. Uh, finally after two or three years I bought them a long time ago never used them before. But today they've been very useful and I've been able to move around here without many problems. But what's here? Where am I? What's this location about? Welcome to the old town of Aceredo in southern Galicia, just next to the border with Portugal, which is just a few miles south from here. As you can see, nobody lives in this town anymore. In fact, it has been underwater for the last 30 years. And that's because, like many towns around here, it just happened to be at the ground spot when they built this uh, reservoir. Only now, 30 years later, and because we haven't had any rain this winter, the town is coming out again, all the structures are visible again, and that makes it a very special place to photograph, and that's why I'm here, that's why I've been coming here for the last three days.
What makes this place unique and the reason why it has become so widely popular lately is that as you can see most of the buildings are still pretty much intact. That's because unlike other towns that got demolished before the water came, the people here didn't want to leave their homes and they didn't leave until the very last minute. It is said that some of them even locked their doors before leaving. You can find a lot of stuff around here. You can find beds, chairs, tables, ladders, even a car. It really looks like this town got caught by surprise by the racing water. Time and time again I kept trying long exposures for reasons I'll explain later. This location was not the best for that kind of shot though, as most spots were pretty sketchy at best, and at times I felt like I was risking my gear. And uh, other times, what I was risking was myself. You see, walking so much mad is not easy. But when you stand in the same position for several minutes while waiting for an exposure to finish, you can get very stuck. You might not realize about it, and if you try to move, well, accidents can happen. Man, I just fell in the lake. And I didn't record it. I'm always recording myself and I always think at least if something like this happens I'll have a, a funny video of it, but not even that this time. Jeez. But all of my effort was about to be rewarded. There was no need for more long exposures as nature gifted me with half an hour of pure magic. The wind was gone, the water was totally still, and the lake became a mirror. I explored the old town of this already old town. I'm, I'm used to see plenty of ruins on my explorations, but most of them are filled with overgrown vegetation. Aceredo doesn't feel abandoned, but rather destroyed, a place where time has stopped. 
Photographing all of this is not easy, though. Finding order in all of that chaos and messiness is very complicated. As I said, I've been coming here for three days now, and the reason is because I'm afraid this place is not going to stay open for much longer. This is not an official touristic spot, it's not a park, it, it's nothing, but it gets crowded every single day. And people are doing kind of silly stuff in these old buildings, and I'm afraid that one day something will happen and they'll have to close the whole thing. Also, this place is going to be underwater again soon. As you can see, it's raining now. And there is another dam just before this one, and that one is much fuller. So if they open that dam one day, this place is gone. So this might be a once-in-a-lifetime chance to photograph this location before it's gone forever, or for at least another 30 years. That's why I'm here, that's why I've been coming here, and that's why I might come back a few times if the place stays open. My goodness, it feels so great here. I'm just like, I don't know, a quarter of a mile from the uh, town. I just came here to this bridge. I knew it was going to be here and I wanted to check it out. But so many people, I knew the place was popular, but I never thought there, could, there was going to be so many people there. There are RVs, and motorbikes. I think I've counted 10 drones. Even the TV was here. Anyway, you might have noticed that I've been focusing mostly on the uh, water because that is, you know, the whole point of this town that has been uh, underwater. Uh, and uh, actually, I think that it would have been much better if the, the, the level of the water was a little bit higher. Yes, the buildings are out, the buildings are above water, and uh, we can see the buildings because the water is so low. But I think if it was just a little bit higher, maybe a couple feet higher, uh, half of the building, uh, you know, underwater and the other half is sticking out and maybe just the roof of a building or something like that. I think it could be much, uh, much better than what we have right now. That besides a couple houses that I found at the beginning of town, the rest of the town is just inland and it's very hard to photograph because it's been, I know, 30 years underwater. So the color and the texture is all the same, the buildings and the landscape. So. I find it very, very hard to create contrast. That's why I've been making so many uh, long exposures, because I want to contrast that brighter, still water against the darker buildings, or the opposite, depending on the lighting, I guess. But you know what I mean, the contrast between the uh, texture-less water and the texture-rich <laughs> uh, buildings and houses. All right, so this is the spot, not because uh, it is perfect, but because it is the only place where I can actually put my tripod and uh, take a photo. It is, uh, again, pretty sketchy here. Um, the foreground is not perfect, even though we have those um, logs that could look cool. It's just, I don't know how clear they are going to be. I'm walking back to town now. The uh, light is pretty flat, it got a little bit cloudier, uh, so I just mounted the uh, Rockinon 85 1.4 because I'm gonna try to shoot it wide open at 1.4 and maybe that way create that separation, that contrast that uh, I've been lucky, the, I've been lacking the whole uh, day here. It's always a little bit of a pain to take it out of, you know, uh, long exposure mode, if you will. I do it manually. I don't have a dedicated mode for that, so I have to go setting by setting and make sure that everything is as it should be. All right, we are ready. Let's go.
I might be totally wrong, this might be totally silly, but I think they used to make wine, I mean to grow grapes on these fields, and those are vines, I think. They look like it. They are still here after so many years. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I don't know if you can see it, but basically I was uh, playing here with the multiple windows, the background and the uh, depth of field to show different layers. So I was focusing on this wall, then on this wall and showing the, uh, the other houses in the background. Uh, I'm not sure about this. Finally, the rain came, but before leaving, I wanted to try my luck with a few more long exposures. I'm very tired, I'm exhausted. I didn't walk that much because this place is not that big, but you know, uh, I sat down only once since I got here just to have a quick snack. I gave it all I had, I did my best. I hope some of the images will work out. Okay, so I think this is going to be it from the underwater town of Atheredo. It's been three days of intense photography. I fell in the lake, I got soaked, I got muddy more times than I can count. And it's been a lot of driving too, but it's been all worth it. I think I made a, a couple images that I really like, even though I think the ones that I like the most are not the, of any buildings or the town themselves, but of all trees and... Uh, sticks there. In any case, I feel lucky for having the chance of seeing and photographing this place. I hope I shared a little bit of that uh, with all of you in this video and the images. I hope it was entertaining. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.